So today's a bit of a training session on how we handle more advanced page navigation. You can see here, this isn't the batch process. This is actually somebody that follows along with our videos. They're making their own application and they need some assistance in how to handle more advanced page navigation, passing content between pages. And because we're probably not going to need that in batch process, I figured it's a good way to cover this for you now, because this is something that most of you will encounter and need is the kind of page navigation. So let's take a look at the problem and how we're going to solve it. So the issue is being able to pass data between pages. So when say this bottom page here or this bottom navigation wants to invoke the go to page and say we want to set this subtitle, that's just a, an example we'll use. It's how we do that, because right now, if we look at the page factory, we can see we have the get page view model and that's used to call go to page. So if we have a look at where go to page is or in this instance for the customers they have certain calls like here where they go to certain pages and it does that by getting the page factories view model and setting it as the current page and then the view locator will translate that into a page for us so ultimately this call navigates pages but you can see there's nothing here we can do to pass in any data or change the view model and that's ultimately the issue so say on the home page here we want to change the subtitle you could get the current page and then afterwards the current page is just a page view model and you could cast the view model so you could do current page um, or rather home page view model uh, and then current page and then page subtitle equals new title and this should work but this is not really the best way there's no reason to cast there and it's not very clean and it will also happen technically after the page is changed. So you can see that that will update the page. So this is one way of getting around it, but we want a cleaner way of doing this. So if we look at the page here, uh, we've got no preview at the minute. That's probably because of this. No default constructor. Yep. So let's just make a default constructor for now, just so the UI will work. And uh, whatever is it expecting. And there we go. So that will just allow us, hopefully, to get some UI in the designer. There we go. And, oh, in fact, we don't even need that. That's not got the navigation in. It will be probably the main window. There we go, the main view. So we can kind of see the navigation here. But we've seen it anyway where we want to do the change. And it's in the main view model here so although this is in one way a simple thing to do it's also quite complicated if you're not sure of the syntax so we'll start in page factory and you can see the customers attempted to do some things here so the first thing i'll do is just revert this back to what we have so we'll get rid of this generic we'll get rid of the second and in fact we'll just delete all this and put in the page factory as we know it so for this, we've got the page names, the page view model, and that's the factory we want to pass in. And then we just have the public page view model, get page view model, it accepts the page name, and it calls the factory dot invoke, and the name. And did I see that there's also a shorthand instead of invoke? Yes, there is. We can even use the shorthand there for calling the function like that. So if we first compile, let's make sure this still compiles and runs. Yep, so it's still working, but now we're back to the page factory that we know in batch process. So the key here is when we create this factory, or rather when the factory generates the view models, which is here, Instead of just passing the view model back, we want to allow the user some time to edit the view model before it comes back. So effectively initialize default values and change the view model after it's been generated. So one way to do that is instead of just passing in or accepting a page name, we can then also say have an action. And let's just say a page view model for now. And we can call this after creation. You can set the default to null so you don't have to provide it. And now if we break this out, so instead of it just being a single line, we can do this. And then we'd have to return like that. 
So now we have this extra thing called after creation that we can invoke. And instead of just returning the view model, we can do here for view model equals and have the factory create the view model. We can then return the view model. But now in here, in between, we can actually call this action. So we can do after creation dot invoke. And that's the only change we should need. If we now go to the app, what we should find is this should still compile because it's a nullable action here. So it's not needed to be provided. And now here where we create the page view model, we should be able to just create this action inside of here. So we can now do after creation. And here we can now say after creation dot and we have access to a page view model, which is fine for now for the subtitle. So we could say subtitle equals new after creation. And then if we run this now, we should find there's the new after creation. So this is ultimately the key. But the problem here is now we only have access to the page view model, not the specific view model. So if this home view model had something in that we cared about, and it typically will, you'd have properties in here you want to set. Currently, you can't do that. So we need to take it one step further. So the key to doing that is to go back to the page factory. And what we need to do is pass in a type so we can alter a specific type. We can't use generics in the factory itself. So ideally you'd want to do a generic here, which means you'd have to do a generic here, but then that's gonna limit the entire factory to one type. And we want the type to be changed at this level. So we don't do generics here, but instead of passing an enum, we're now gonna pass a type and it can be the type of the view model. And then in the page view model, what we'll do is pass the type here. So you want the generics here. We can now delete the name because we're not gonna use the page name enum. We're actually gonna check the type of the object passed in. And if it's a page view model, we already have the information that we need. With that, we can also set a restriction. So we can say where T is a page view model. So now you can only call the get page view model if the type that you're passing in inherits from page view model. Then in here, in order to invoke the call, it's expecting now a type, not a page name. So we have the type as a generic passed into the method, and we can cast it back to an actual type by doing the type of T. Everything else stays the same. And now one thing we can do is instead of the after creation just being a generic page view model, we can now pass in that generic T. Here, we know the view model is gonna be of type T because that's what it's gonna generate for us. So we can cast it to type T. What that will mean is when we get to this part here, this after creation now, we'll know about the type. So if we put in here, instead of the page names home, delete that now, and we put in here, home page view model, that's the generic type passed in, and it bubbles all the way over to this after creation. And now we have access to the actual home page view model prior to it being returned. So what will happen is you'll call this method, you'll pass in the home page view model as a type, it will use dependency injection to generate the view model, and then it will call this after creation before it gets returned to the current page. That means we need to update all of these. So instead of watch list, you now have the watch list page view model. And you basically have to just update your calls to do this. And there's no harm in now doing this instead of a page name. In one way, it makes more sense because this is a view model and it needs to be aware of the other view models. We need to handle the logic inside of the page factory so that if it's not of a certain type, we error out, but we'll do that in a moment. So for now, this one will be holdings page view model, settings page view model, and watch list item details view model. And the only thing I'd recommend here is these are page view models, but they don't have the name page in the list. So it's not really easy to tell these are pages. You wanna make sure they all have pages. So this one really needs changing. I think there's one more, let's just try compile. There's one call here, so this needs to change. And you can see now, say here, if we wanted to, we could say, view model, and we have access to the view model here. And this can be set to whatever we like. So you can do 
access as you do page navigation anywhere you call this get page view model. And one more at the top. So now that compiles, that won't work yet because we haven't updated the binding. So you can see that's going to now throw. So even though we've defined the page factory how we want it, we now also need to change the way that we inject these services because originally we've passed in a function page name and page view model. And now it should be a function of type and page view model. So in here, again, this is where it would be easy for some and very hard if you don't know the syntax. Name is now a type, so we'll call this type. And you can't switch on type as easy as you'd think. So you might go, oh, right, so we'll just do in here type of home page view model. But it's going to complain that this is not a constant. But the trick is quite simple. You can just do this default catch all when this type is of any kind. So you can just do an underscore. And now you can use further selecting by saying where. And now what you can do is do anything you like, like where type equals this. So this is just a shorthand way. So instead of doing ifs and else's and more code, you can kind of replace this like so over and over with each one. It's just a little bit cleaner. And now we can just copy this over. And that's how we'll do the new binding. So if we run this, it should still now fully work. And this is the new way of handling the page navigation with the ability to pass anything in. So you can see there's the new after creation and everything else navigates. The last thing we want to just consider is making sure that we can't call the get page view if this isn't a page view model, but you can see this is handled by this where clause. And if you remove that, they could in theory pass anything into this. So it could be an object or a type of anything. But ultimately, this where on the generic is what's actually limiting this. So it has to be a page view model. So we're all fully handled there. You can see ultimately the change is very small. This is now a few lines of code. And the app is just a different syntax to find the correct view model. And then the main view model is a change in syntax. But those things can be very complicated because the syntax is quite confusing. It can be difficult for some. So at least now you know, I'll probably implement this into batch process just so the format's the same. And then going forward, if we ever need to handle something after the creation, we can. So I'll merge this into batch process. And going forward on the next video, you'll see that this page factory is of this style. I'm sure many of you are going to run into this where you need to do something on navigation and you need to pass in information. So that's now how you do it.